Hello everyone. So the next time you're outside walking around and you see a big tree like this one, I want you to ask yourself, how did that thing get to be so big? It's like, where did the mass of that tree come from? And you might think it was, has something to do with water or the nutrients getting pulled up through the soil, or the roots in the soil, and you'd be partially right. But really, the bulk of the mass of that tree comes straight out of the air. That tree is pulling in carbon dioxide and fixing the carbon and making it part of itself, which is really kind of amazing. The content objective today is to take a close look at the carbon cycle and understand how that works, as well as how humans have influenced that cycle. So here we go. I've got a little Cornell note set up for you here, and it'd be a good idea to hit pause and jot this down. Our three essential questions are, one, how do uh, photosynthesis and cellular respiration drive this cycle? Also, uh, what's the difference between a carbon sink and a carbon source? And finally, how have humans influenced this cycle? And so here we go. We're going to start with the, the nuts and bolts of the cycle. And so hopefully uh, you remember from your biology days, we've got photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So photosynthesis is ha happening in plants and, and really anything that's green. So green algae, maybe not green frogs, but things that have chloroplasts. And what happens is that light energy uh, hits carbon dioxide and water that are in that leaf and they react together and produce sugar or glucose. And it's pretty awesome because you've got two inorganic things that are non-living producing something organic, uh, which is a big deal. And it also produces oxygen, which as we know, we need to breathe. And so you and I and really all living things, including plants, are doing cellular respiration. And that is taking the products of photosynthesis uh, and so we breathe in the oxygen, we already ate the sugar which got to our cells, and then in the, in the uh, mitochondria of our cells, those things combine, and the product is carbon dioxide and water, which for us, we just breathe that out. That's what you're exhaling right now. But what we're really after is the energy, the ATP, for your cells to do work. And so if you just take a look, the light energy here goes through, now it's stored as chemical energy, which is then uh, released as uh, mechanical energy or ATP for your cell. So the energy is conserved. Another thing to notice is that the products of photosynthesis are the reactants of, car of cellular respiration, and the, react or the products of cellular respiration are the reactants of photosynthesis. And so you can see this cycle here. It's like a eight, crazy eight. Um, so here's kind of a simpler picture of an animal getting what it needs from the plant. The giraffe is eating the sugar and is breathing the oxygen. And then the, the giraffe gives the plant what it needs, the carbon dioxide and the water. So it's a nice little cycle. Here's a little bit more sophisticated diagram. Light energy in, uh, ATP, and then I guess heat energy out too. But you've got the mitochondria where uh, the cellular respiration is happening inside of the cell. You've got the chloroplast where it's happening in um, the plant or the, the green algae. Okay, and so um, here's another diagram, and this just really shows that it's not just happening on land, which we tend to think about the most, but this cycle's happening in the ocean too, uh, as well as underground in, this, in the soil. And so a lot of times we think of the big things like animals, us, and trees and stuff, but really most of the action, or a lot of the action, is happening in the microbe world. And so they say that more than half of the oxygen that we're breathing comes from uh, algae in the ocean doing photosynthesis. Not so much the trees, it's the algae. It's the little guys that are doing the work. Um, but so it's all involved there. Uh, so I'm going to come down here and we're going to take a look at the difference between a carbon sink and a carbon source. And so a sink, and it's not that hard, you just need to remember these because they're important concepts. A sink is where carbon is stored. A source is where, where it's released from. And so for a sink, um, you know, an obvious sink would be a forest. All, that, all those trees are made of carbon that they've pulled out of the atmosphere. So the carbon is stored in those things. Uh, you can say you are a carbon sink, right? You've got carbon stored in your body. Soil as well, the black, what makes soil black is carbon. Uh, and then of course like fossil fuels like coal and natural gas, oil also contain carbon as well. One that you might not think about though is the ocean. And so the ocean actually pulls a lot of carbon dioxide out of the air, it's dissolved in the ocean, and so it's stored there. Actually a lot more carbon is 
carbon dioxide is stored in the ocean than in the atmosphere. If you think about it, the, it's about 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere right now. It's way less than 1%, even though it gets all kinds of attention due to climate change, but it's way less than 1%. On the flip side, you, what's the source of carbon? So it's where it's released. And so I guess I could say I'm doing, I'm, I'm a source right now as I'm breathing out carbon dioxide, as you are as well. Uh, also, if we burn things, anytime we're burning something, we're releasing carbon. And so when that forest burns, all the carbon that's stored in there is released. Or fossil fuels, here's a quick little chart in case you're interested. But when we burn coal or oil or gas, we release carbon dioxide. And then lastly, uh, one to think about is when oceans warm up, and we'll get more into this later, but when warm water uh, is warmed, uh, that carbon dioxide is squeezed out of it, and so it releases it. So that can be, so an ocean can be a sink, and it can be a, a source of carbon dioxide. And so uh, moving along here, as we put up more, as humans are like putting up more and more carbon dioxide through the things we do, deforestation, um, when we take down those trees, now they're not doing photosynthesis anymore. Uh, and also, of course, we're burning tons of fossil fuels, like 90 million pounds, or 90 million tons a day, which is really a, an insane number to uh, think about. When that happens, uh, more and more carbon dioxide is getting absorbed in the ocean. They say it's around a third of what we put up there is absorbed into the ocean. And uh, what happens is that CO2 goes in and it reacts with water. And so you can think of this as ocean acidification. Definitely write that down. It's an important concept. And just look at this reaction. CO2 and water turn into carbonic acid. And if you remember, an acid is anything that releases a hydrogen ion. And so here's the hydrogen that later gets released there and then it gets released again, from, and then the carbonates come out too. And so you're changing the pH of the ocean. The pH is dropping, and the reason that's a big deal is, one, uh, acid reacts with uh, calcium carbonate, and so it reacts with uh, shell, you know, shellfish, like lobsters and clams and things like that. And so it weakens the shells of those types of creatures, as well as it bleaches out the coral uh, in a coral reef, which is a big problem. Uh, if you ever get the chance, you got to go scuba diving or just snorkeling around a coral reef, and it, it is really an amazing thing. And so these reefs are, are biodiversity hotspots in the ocean, and if we start harming the reefs um, you know, through ocean acidification, uh, all the life connected to those reefs will, will suffer. So that's a, that's a big deal. We are losing our coral reefs, and it's, uh, we should be alarmed about that. Uh, finally, and we're just going to just say it, we're not going to get into it, but of course when we're putting up more carbon dioxide through burning fossil fuels and deforestation and, and so forth, as well as the warming oceans releasing it, we're increasing the, level, the amount of greenhouse gases we have, and we have much more to follow on that. But for right now, we're going to leave it there. I, my hope is you found that interesting and informative. Uh, take a minute. Do a summary on your Cornell notes. Make sure you answer these uh, essential questions. And I would also jot some questions in the margins to kind of like, you know, fill that out. Uh, and in the meeting, and then we'll see you next time. Take care.